Pre-Implantation Genetic Screening, or PGS. PGS is a technology for improving embryo selection as it provides information about the chromosomes in the embryo cells. Chromosomes are made up of DNA, which contains the code for how we develop, grow, and function. Think of it as the blueprint for your entire body. Healthy people typically have 23 pairs of chromosomes in each cell of their body. One chromosome in each pair comes from the sperm and the other from the egg. Embryos whose cells have the correct number of chromosomes are called euploid. Aneuploid embryos have the wrong number of chromosomes. They can either have an extra chromosome or aneuploid embryos can have a missing chromosome. Often more than one chromosome is affected. Since the wrong number of chromosomes is a common cause of not getting pregnant or having a miscarriage, PGS allows us to avoid transferring aneuploid embryos that are more likely to miscarry or not implant. In the laboratory, the first step of the process is introducing the sperm to the egg. To minimize risk of contamination from extra sperm, ICSI is used to fertilize the egg. Around the third day of culture, when the embryo contains fewer than 10 cells, a tiny hole is made in the embryo's soft shell. This hole allows a few cells to poke out and be removed from the embryo at the blastocyst stage. Embryo biopsy occurs on days five to seven at the blastocyst stage, when cells destined to become the placenta are safely removed. The embryo is then frozen and kept in our clinic while the cells are sent to a PGS testing laboratory. Test results take typically up to six weeks. What are the advantages of PGS? As a woman gets older, her chance of conceiving decreases and her chance of having a miscarriage increases. While all women are at risk of producing some aneuploid embryos, the rate of aneuploidy is low in most women under 35, so it doesn't appear to be helpful. The lower chance of having a baby and the higher chance for a miscarriage start to increase for women 35 to 38. There is some evidence that PGS is helpful for this group. The rate of aneuploidy starts increasing the most after 38 years of age, when chances for having a baby are lower. When using PGS, the chance of having a baby is about the same regardless of age up to 40 years old, and the miscarriage rate stays low. Are you a candidate for PGS? While age is a common reason to do PGS, women who have recurrent miscarriages or a history of delivering a chromosomally abnormal baby can lower the risk of similar outcomes in the future by doing PGS. Women who have had several unsuccessful embryo transfers, commonly called repeated IVF implantation failure, can use PGS to help distinguish between an embryo problem and a uterine problem. If you've had an IVF cycle and have a lot of frozen blastocysts, you can use PGS to help choose the best embryo to transfer. We use AMH to get an idea of how many eggs and therefore embryos you will have. This chart shows that AMH decreases as a woman gets older and also shows that AMH is low even in about 10% of younger women. If you are doing PGS to try to improve your chance of getting pregnant, it makes sense to consider your AMH and how many embryos you might have to choose from. In this first example, a woman with a low AMH has only three embryos, and only the embryo in the middle is suitable for PGS. She may prefer to transfer this embryo without using PGS. In the second example, this woman has a higher AMH and made at least nine embryos, with most of them being suitable for PGS. AMH can help guide a decision on whether PGS is right for you. One disadvantage of PGS is that it takes time. Instead of doing a transfer in the first month of treatment, there are two additional months required to complete the PGS testing and perform a thawed embryo transfer. In addition to the cost of the PGS testing, ICSI is required, which may not have been necessary had you not chose PGS. Once you have the PGS results, there is also the cost of a thawed embryo replacement cycle. You might have been successful with a fresh transfer without the cost and delay of PGS. And though reduced, 
miscarriages still happen for reasons other than aneuploidy. As with any testing, there are false positives and false negatives, so you should consider the risks. Even before getting to testing, a small group of patients do not have an embryo that is suitable for biopsy that might implant had it been transferred. There is a small chance that the PGS results are incorrect and that a normal embryo may be discarded or that an aneuploid embryo is transferred. The stress of a biopsy may cause an embryo to stop growing or not implant after transfer. And there is a small chance that the embryo may not survive the freezing and the thaw. PGS results can be complicated, so it's important to understand what results you might get. In most cases, the results are clear and you will hopefully have at least one euploid embryo. The average percent of embryos that are euploid decrease from 60 to 70% in women less than 35 years old to only 10 to 20% in women over 40. The second most common result is aneuploid. Aneuploid embryos are considered unsuitable for transfer. On rare occasions, the testing does not work or the results are inconclusive. In these cases, the embryo can be transferred without a result or they can be re-biopsied. Your doctor will discuss the result with you. In 10 to 20% of embryos, the biopsied cells are diagnosed as being mosaic. This means that some of the cells in the biopsy had the normal number of chromosomes and some had an abnormal number. Since this is only a sample of the embryo, we cannot say with certainty whether the embryo has the same combination of chromosomes or, if it does, whether the cells containing the extra chromosomes are only located in the placenta. If an embryo is truly a mosaic, this diagram shows that the abnormal cell, colored blue, may result in cells in both part of the embryo that becomes the baby and the part that becomes the placenta, or just in the part that becomes the baby, or just in the part that becomes the placenta, in which case the baby would have the correct number of chromosomes. Your doctor will discuss the result with you and the impact of this on your chance of pregnancy. Next, Fill in the consent form with your clinical team. A nurse will schedule an appointment to review the consent form, and then you'll be ready to begin your treatment. Please ask our team if you have any further questions.